Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. A while back I made a video showing the difference between TIG welding aluminum with AC versus DC with pure argon shielding gas. Without the cleaning action of AC or the extra heat from helium shielding gas, DC TIG is tough because of the clumpy mess the oxide layer turns into as the aluminum melts. Not long ago I found flux core aluminum TIG filler wire intended for use with DC TIG. I wanted to see how it works, so I ordered a pack. It was only $10 or $12, but it doesn't come with very much, and the pieces are very short. They are also very thin, so it's not going to be very good for thick aluminum. However, if it works well, it could be a good option for someone to have around for small aluminum projects that might come up if all you have is a DC TIG welder. I also have some aluminum stick welding rods, which are obviously coated in flux. I'm going to give both a shot as filler on aluminum running DC TIG and 100% argon shielding gas. So let's jump right in and see how it goes. Unfortunately, the thinnest aluminum I have in the garage right now is 1 8 of an inch, and the flux core filler is just too thin. I'd say it's probably 1 16th of an inch thick at most, and it's more like a tube because it's full of flux, so it's hollow. So even at low amperage, this filler just blasts away. Because of this, it was extremely difficult to get it to work. But there were promising moments, so I would be interested to test other sizes if I could find them, although so far I haven't seen other sizes available. The stuff I have here might work on really thin aluminum, but it doesn't work for 1 8 inch aluminum. If I get some thin aluminum to try out, I'll let you know how it goes. The stick rods were a bit tricky to use since the flux was on the outside, making the overall diameter fairly large. But, after some practice and getting familiar with what to expect, I was able to get things to flow okay. The flux definitely allows for a smoother and more controllable puddle, and it lets the aluminum flow together much better. But getting a puddle started in the first place is a struggle. It really doesn't go well until both sides of the joint are preheated to the point that they will flow well, but not so hot that they fall away. So it takes a lot of heat, but you can't do it quickly, or at least I had trouble trying to do it quickly. I found that if I pump in too much current, the pieces will just melt away before it starts to flow properly. So I had to bring up the heat slowly, dab in some filler to get the flux to mix in, and then just kind of keep bringing up the heat until it starts to flow, then I could start moving. Once I got the right rhythm, it went okay, and I'm sure with some more practice, I could make a reasonable looking bead. I was even able to weld a joint vertical up. Although, welding in the flat position, it is a little bit easier to get things started. I know none of the beads here <laughs> look great, but again, I did get to the point where it was going well enough that I'm sure it's just a matter of practice to get decent results. So, it's definitely doable. I am able to TIG weld aluminum with DC and argon using aluminum stick welding rods as filler, and it would probably be even easier with these flux core rods if they were sized to better match the thickness of the material being welded. But that doesn't mean I'd recommend it for most people. There are some definite drawbacks. I'm sure I would improve with practice, but I don't feel like I'd ever be able to go as fast as I can with AC. I feel like this is a slower method that will put more heat into whatever you're welding. So that might be a consideration if you need to weld something where limiting the amount of heat input is important. Also, my personal favorite thing about TIG is that it is quiet and clean. This process is quiet, but it is not clean. The arc is a wild, fiery orange beast, flux runs everywhere, and when you finish a bead, it leaves a nasty mess that is surprisingly difficult to remove. Just, I, I actually welded this vertical up, well, starting here, vertical up. I'm gonna try and get the flux off of here and uh, see what it looks like. Oh. 
The slag and discoloration left behind is tenacious, and with how soft aluminum is, it's difficult to get the weld clean without scratching it up or removing some of the aluminum while trying to wire brush or wire wheel it clean. And considering the mess, the increased difficulty compared to AC TIG, and the fact that you are using a stick electrode as filler, you could just stick weld it. With some practice, you might end up with better looking results with TIG, and you'll probably have better luck with TIG on thin material, but it was definitely much quicker and easier for me to throw together a 1 inch aluminum T-joint with a stick welder than it was with DC TIG using a stick rod as filler. So ultimately it works, and I think with practice it could even work pretty well. But it's unfortunately not quite the perfect DC aluminum hack that I'd hoped it would be. It's finicky and messy. But if you already have a DC TIG machine, picking up these flux core rods or some aluminum stick rods isn't a big investment, so you won't be out much if you decide to give it a go. But definitely practice on something that doesn't matter first. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions or if you'd like to see more aluminum testing, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.